Hello my loves and welcome back at long last to Let's Play Disco Elysium, contender for possibly one of the best RPGs ever made. Been neglecting this one a little bit lately because I got distracted by, well, you know, Elden Ring. Um, you know, as I said before, I could there was a point when I could have really changed my channel to the Elden Elegy channel or the Elegy Ring channel, which no, no, we won't do that, 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 no. Anyway, welcome back. Let's carry on, shall we? I've really missed this. I've really missed this. Um, it's such a cool game. It's such a beautiful piece of work, this one. You have to... I mean, watching it is one thing. If you watch any Let's Play of this on YouTube, for example, they'll all be different. Oh, look, it's snowing. And there's Harry. Oh, dear. And our friend Kim. Harry's carrying his bag. That's cool. We spoke to these gentlemen last time, did we not? I do believe we did. Tequila Sunset. He nods in appreciation. His name is Idiot Doom Spiral. That's a great name, isn't it? Um, be seeing you. Spoke to him. I believe we spoke to all of these gentlemen last time round. The legend! He's back. And firstly... I got smokes, and piss, and a little speed to spice things up. Mmm, is that right? Is that right? I love the portraits. Rosemary. Um, hmm, smokes, Astra. Alcohol, I don't want that. Um, speed bottle. That, uh, Motrix plus one Psyche minus one morale. That's the amphetamines. I'll have it. Here you go, friend. He hands you a tiny bottle with a straw. The powder looks clotted and quite mouldy. That is unhygienic and dangerous, and it does not endear you to me. Just wanted to make that clear, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, Kim. Unhygienic. This stuff is very hygienic. Anything else? I'm off. I'm sorry, Kim, for disappointing you. I should be sorry, really. I mean, Kim has been... Our friend and uh, compatriot all the way through. Oh, look at the fucking snow. It's so nice. Oh, God, I love this world so much. Ooh, I will take all of that. Thank you. Oh, healing item gained. Magnesium. Yes. Okay. Um, why did the 41st send me? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you seem to be following me. Kim's going to be doing that. His job. So I think we've been here. I think we've done all of this part. Oh god, the feet I can't even describe to you like the feeling of this game. There is a there is a, an emotion to it that is really powerful, really very profound. Bench, the worn and beaten the wooden worn planks. And beaten oh, planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. They don't, do they? Mm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. You can revisit the bench mm. if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. Oh, okay. Thank you, tutorial agent. That's very kind of you to let me know. What's this place? Okay. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. Hard to see the details. The colours, all warm and welcoming, are cosy enough. What's this? A flower trough where nothing really grows. Maybe in spring. Maybe. Maybe. Hello. It feels safe and warm in here. Not like outside. Yeah. Oh. I'll take it. Roughed grouse taxidermy. Cool. Hello. Child. Hello, mister. A young girl, barely four or five years old, sits on the sofa. She is looking at you with frank curiosity. She's got one of the most coherent portraits of anyone. In fact, have you noticed the, chill, the child characters have more coherent and more portrait-like pictures than anyone else? Everyone else, the adults, are all abstracted and weird because they're neurotic and they have, they have accruals of problems and whatnot. It's very clever. She clutches a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. 
<laughs> I heard there was a girl around here who has armoured gloves. Is that you? Uh, where are your parents? Are the twins outside your brothers? What's this? Show her the stuffed bird you took from the ceiling. What's that thing you're po oh, holding? Hang on. Where are your parents? I'm outside. And I don't really know about my dad. <laughs> she gives you a bright smile like it's a good thing. Um, are the twins outside yeah. your brothers? Oh. They don't want to play with me. They're older and play outside. Oh. They look the same. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell them apart. <laughs> they look identical, right? I said the they same thing. Identical. <laughs> she slowly proceeds the word, uh, processes the word, then snickers with laughter. What's this? Show her the stuffed bird you took it's from the ceiling. House. She yelps, smiling broadly. You might be able to get on Garth's good side if you replace the broken skewer you almost certainly broke. Ah. Oh, can I have it? I know someone who really likes stuffed birds. Sure. I mean, you already took it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. Oh. What's that thing you're holding? It's Lammy. He's my friend. Sort of. Like... She holds the fuzzy beast up to demonstrate. Lammy is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. Nah. One of the eye buttons is missing, and the fur is tattered in several parts. Oh, narrator, I love your voice. Your growly Leo 9 sort of Mustafa thing that you have going on. Um, Lammy looks like he's falling apart. Lammy looks soft. Oh, okay. Well, pleased to meet Lammy you, Lammy. Lammy usually doesn't like strangers, but you're also fuzzy, like Lammy. I suppose I am. Yeah. <laughs> I heard there was a girl here who has armored gloves. Is that you? Oh, I had gloves, very big ones, heavy too. Oh, okay. Where did you get these gloves? Found them when Lammy and I were playing hide and seek mm. in an empty house, where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. I think they probably did. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. Ah, thank you, Empathy. And where are the gloves I now? I hid them. The twins were going to take them. They're stupid. She lifts a stuffed toy up and looks into its one remaining eye as they're searching for confirmation. We are going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. He enunciates the last two words carefully. Kim, you're very good at communication, but I get the impression you're not that good at talking to kids. Oh. She doesn't seem to understand, but the lieutenant's tone has conveyed to her the important part. They're in my sand castle. Oh. Behind our house. Under the sand. You can oh. break the castle. It's not very good. Oh, that's a shame. Bye. Oh, the girl's large, curious eyes remain fixed on you. Thank you. She was nice. Oh, look at that. A warm fire. Industrial coal pellets burn with an orange glow. How nice. Ah, so we need to find the sand castle. She was actually quite a nice character. So, Sandcastle then. Let me have a look at what we're going. We haven't got any level ups or skill points or anything like that. Uh, have I got a slot open? Oh, I do. Um, oh, no, I can't. Damn it. Oh, well. That's a shame. Okay. Maybe later. Oh, my God. We've got a lot of stuff. Uh, plus one electrochemistry, god ass. <laughs> Bow knot, theatre kid. Oh, I like that, but I don't want to remove the necktie. Biker cops. Oh no, we don't want those. Or that. Samaran conical hat. Inten insensitive bachelor party vibes. Yes, we definitely don't want that. That's very 1990s, like early 1990s. That's kind of like Pat Sharp, Timmy Mallet 1990s, that is. Um, which will mean nothing to any of you if you're not, like, British and born in the 1980s. Um, that's very nice, but it looks silly if you're wandering around in it. What have we got in terms of items, anyway? That's... Ooh, we've got stuff, yes. This postcard depicts a forest of smokestacks releasing fat plumes of smoke into the blue cloudless sky. Uh, the tinge of age, the colour of old teeth gives it a sickly look. Written on the back is a single sentence repeated twice. I got out, I got out. No addressee. How interesting. Blue med medicinal spirit. This liquid has an unearthly blue tint. The kind that might or might not, but definitely does glow in the dark. This is 98.7 pure alcohol. Keep it away from an open flame. 
The dead body of a grouse, stuffed with some unknown material. From a distance, it might just pass off as the real thing. The bird itself looks extremely ruffled and slightly grumpy. A bit like Harry, really. Yeah? Um, ooh. The tape you found from a shack on the coast. The A-side has the smallest church in St. Seon written on it, while the B-side is supposed to contain the uh, instrumental version. Requires a boombox to play. I thought I had the one. Reel is just what you needed. Yeah. The reels attached to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. Should we do this? Is this a good idea? Or... Sorry, my loves. Rufus is just climbing where she bloody shouldn't. She's on top of a stack of books on my bookshelf at the moment. Rufus! Oi! Get down! Rufus! You little shit. That stack is coming down, I can tell you, if she doesn't get down in a moment. Oh well. Press the play on the tape. You press the large button marked Commencer, and the tape starts spinning. There's a small delay before the song starts playing. Press your ear against the speaker, It yeah. sounds like someone's moving in the room, Ooh. getting comfortable. Then the organ starts playing a simple, melancholic tune echoing in the hallway. A lone singing voice joins in, oh. telling you about the tiniest church in Sessons, surrounded by even tinier yard. You almost feel the seaside mist on your skin. It's mega sad. Mega sad, is it, narrator? Thank you. A click, then silence for a bit. Then the tape stops spinning. That was cool. <laughs> I liked that. How very sweet, I suppose, in a weird, weird kind of way. Okay, well, that was fun. Now we need to find the sand castle. Hello, boys. Can we talk to these now I've talked to her, their sister, I wonder? The scruffy-haired little boy kicks the Here we the are, yes. While the other watches him do it. Uh, is little Lily your sister? Point to the yeah. house. Uh, okay. <laughs> Lily ends twin. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's it. You're being laconic about it. It doesn't look like he knows what that means. <laughs> Bye, kids. Take care. What about the other one? Let's see if he. The scruffy haired little boy. Oh, hang on, no. The stone. What? That's the same one. This one. The scruffy haired little oh, boy. Oh, no. They're both identical. Ha ha ha. Funny. Ah. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll take it. Why not? It's all money, isn't it? Not that I really need money at the moment after conning that rich gentleman. Ah, there's the sand castle. Remember? The really, really rich guy in the container. Oh, I'll take that. We've got all the money we need, probably for the rest of the game. Weather has not been kind to Lily's little sand castle. Oh. The once mighty towers are quickly eroding away. You can see something shining back to you from what must have been a vast underground catacomb network. <laughs> All right, why, why not? Reach in the catacombs and pull out the shiny object. The walls and floors give way to the giant's greed. Oh. Collapse and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. Ceramic gauntlets? Congratulations. That's the gauntlet down then. We're doing good on the armor collection front. Oh, fabulous. Those are from the corpse. Holy shit. I didn't expect that. That's awesome. Oh, we can't. Oh, they're, they're key items, so we can't, like, look at them or interact with them. That's Oh, we can. We can. Let's have a look. Clenching and unclenching your fists has never been so fun. The tiny ceramic plates make a lovely clicking sound when your fingers move. Uh, the gloves are a bit sandy, but the grip is phenomenal. Plus two interfacing. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I could equip them, but they are evident, so I'm not going to. Ooh. This does not look salubrious, Kim. I don't think we should be walking through this. Rust eaten letters read Mazut. I don't know if you remember, my loves, but last time round we did find we found out that uh, the water runs from the west, the source is upstream, a broken pipe. Uh, we found out that Harry, uh, in his binge that he can't remember, actually crashed his car just upstream. Like, into the ice, into the water. Could have probably killed himself and lots of other people as well. He was a little bit perturbed by it, to say the least. Oh, we can't get anywhere here. Oh, it's locked off. Okay. 
I'll have to find another way around there. Can we get across? Not here, apparently. Or can we get up on here? That'd be nice. Nope. Oh, but we can get under. That's odd. Oh, the music. Honestly, this is one of the best soundtracks to any game I've ever come across. It's gorgeous. Oh, yes, I'll have that. Definitely. Yeah. Finders, keepers, waste not, want not, etc. We're actually not doing too badly. I can't believe we found the ceramic gauntlets already. That's brilliant. Ooh. Well, this one's a bit of a shithole, isn't it? Oh, more money. It's always good. No boat in the boathouse today. <laughs> Clearly. Thank you for that observation, Harry. The boathouse is shoddily constructed. A strong breeze might blow it over. You'd better stay away from it then, Harry, eh? That was a reference to Harry's flatulence, by the way. No, 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 I don't want to talk to Kim. Not as such, anyway. I like him fine, but I don't want to talk to him at the moment. Ancient paint is peeling off the roof of the shaded bench, covered in rust. Hello. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Look, Kim, even more bullet holes. Something's definitely gone down here. Mm, correct. The lieutenant examines the, the wall closely. The bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency in Martinez's sense. <laughs> <doing affairs. laughs> Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. Yeah, thanks, Kim. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Mm -hmm. Something you don't see these days. Why not? The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the revolution. Ah, of course. The destructive power of such tools proved to be too much. We do need to retain some humanity in this world. Some humanity. Even more bullet holes. Um, vision, oh, God. Plus one bullet holes. We might make this. We might not, though. <gasps> of ghostly shades. Oh, look at that! Them. There are many of them. A dozen, at least. The heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. Oh, was it an execution? It's quiet. No sound. So an no execution meters. after the revolution, yeah? Ten meters away. Other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles prime. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. Oh, no. Snowflakes fall on the wooden planks and the surrounding sand dunes, covering the land with the white of innocence. And soon the red of not. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and pride have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. Other than what Harry sees, of course. The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round, where only one soldier has the loaded rifle. Mm. Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. Yeah. Look at the people against a the A host wall. of men, probably in everyday clothes, ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting, a common practice for executions in some nations, as demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes. Mm. They stand, facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Yeah, all Harry can really tell is that they were shot, obviously. Ordinary people. Familiar, each and every one of them. Thank you, Espirit de Corps. Who were they? Comrades, the forsaken, the wretched, who tried to yeah. rise against the horrors of the world. Yeah. Look at the line of soldiers. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats, holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side, but from which one? Mm. Those uniforms look familiar. We know someone who wears one of those uniforms, don't we? Remember the old gentleman playing bowls? Look at the person standing on the side. The commandant. The one who gives the order. Mm. Machine gun fire crackling through the air. The lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. I wonder if he was the commandant. 
That would be very interesting, wouldn't it? Who was... Who in this execution? I don't know. I don't know who died here. Lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Mm. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. Mm. It could even have been the employees of the failed R&D center down the coast as their building was taken over by the revolutionaries. All right. Or maybe. What about people from the coalition, the so-called moralists? Yeah. It's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. Oh. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, mm -hmm. it was a commandant, the superior giving the orders. Yeah, of course it was. Of course it fucking was. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. Wow. God, there's the moments in this game. It's what it's made of. The little moments. It's it's uh, are incredible. The little narratives that make up the world. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. The sign says "Entre Interdite." I have no idea. Okay. An old ticket taker booth. Uh, no longer in operation. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Wrong button. Uh, people paid money to park here. No one would pay now. No, they bloody wouldn't. Look at the state of it. It's appalling, isn't it? I love it myself. Oh, I'll take that. Thank you. What else have we got? Yep. Always, always, always. Why not? It's useful. If it's useful, we're having it. I'm a bit of a pack rat in RPGs. I don't know whether you've noticed, my loves. But if, if something's useful, I'm having it. Simple as that. This is beautiful. This is the kind of place I would hang out if it was local, you know? I have a, a thing aesthetically for urban and, in, and industrial decay. I think that it, it's, it can be very, very beautiful in its own melancholic fashion. What the heck is that? Okay, I'm going to have a look at what that was because I have no idea. Oh, it's an article of clothing, so this could be interesting. Found uh, Pipo Pipo, plus two logic, ultimate peak focus, and minus one perception. Eyes on the road. Okay. The smell, uh, the small wire framing inside this futuristic looking found Pipo hat gives it the aerodynamic shape of a swoop skier's helmet, but none of its protective qualities. Covers the wearer's ears and eyebrows to bring down the drag coefficient. Let's see what it looks like. Really stupid, but I'm going to wear it anyway. Because we don't have a hat yet. And Harry could use a hat. Don't you think? The door is not only barred shut, it is inaccessible. Well, that's unambiguous, isn't it? I could actually do with a morale booster, to be honest. I don't have much. I'll have to go to the Frit again at some point. See if I can find something. Kimmy, you're not going to comment on Harry's hat? No? Alright then, fine. I'm just going to let him get on with it, are you? Oh, hello. Oh, yes. This section of the coast hasn't been used in decades. Right. Interesting. Oh, hello! Tiny cages carefully constructed. Are you some sort of trapper? Here we go. Nice and easy. Oh, it's you! Out, little guys. Not out of this chair. Oh, it's the cryptozoologist! We met his wife uh, earlier on. She wanted to know what he's up to. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Mm. I've got coffee, by the way. Something that Harry could perpetually use. Who's there? Oh, the police. <laughs> Hello, officers. Hello, officers. I like him, and I like his nose. 
Is that the police? Why are the police here? Oh dear, Gary the crypto fascist. <laughs> There's a cryptozoologist and a crypto fascist sharing the same fire. Okay, fine game. It's like a joke. Don't worry, Gary. I'll handle it. I'll handle it. Oh, he's, he's, he's Australian, is he? He's doing the Crocodile Dundee thing. Cool. You must be Morel, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? Oh, I like his voice. Uh, Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back. Of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken. And we can't go all the way around the A81. Yeah, that was me. I broke the water lock with my motor carriage. But it's fixed now. You can go back. Uh, <laughs> uh, withhold the whole story, oh, I think. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Warm bed. Did he say we can go back now? I like Gary's portrait with the uh, the halo. That's cool. Yes, Gary. We can go soon. <laughs> if you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Will do, man. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. He refastens a bit of netting that has come loose in the wind. Uh, tell me about this phasmid you're looking mm. for. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for mm. What makes it so difficult to find? If I remember correctly, it's um, it can camouflage itself. It's like a chameleon. Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Uh oh. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? Yeah. And I suspect it may have also developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators or scientists in our present case. <laughs> what sort of specialized techniques is the phasmid using to hide itself? It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception. Impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. Oh, <laughs> Harry doesn't need any of that. Harry does that all on his own. He doesn't need any, like, cryptid to do that for him. But I cannot describe how these defenses work. Defenses. Much less how they evolve without studying a live specimen. I love his voice. I love all the voices in this, actually, but that yes, is brilliant. It makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. Thank you, Inland Empire. As usual, you are a font of insight and wisdom. Um, how big is this phasmid? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. Quite giant. One known species of phasmid called the Megaphasmodea zoensis is about the size of a grown man's forearm. That's quite so, big. Uh, <clears throat> he leaves the conclusion up to you. Seems puny, to be honest. <laughs> Physical instrument. Yeah, you would think that. Um... Why are you so interested in this stick bug? It doesn't seem to be as colourful as some of the other cryptids I've heard about. Typical rookie assumption. Uh oh. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Ah, right, okay. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any cryptozoologist's career. But to study it and its defences, find out how it stayed hidden so long. He shakes his head. Would be glory itself. Thank you, electrochemistry. <laughs> um, what have you discovered about it so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. Oh, don't tell me it's real. Wouldn't that be great if it actually turns out to be real and we find it? So no one's ever found one. Not <clears> yet. <throat> That's what makes it a cryptid. Of course, otherwise it would just be an animal, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Instead of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? Great question, Kim. Great question. I don't think he's going to take too kindly to it, though. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody who, like, believes in this stuff? It's a minefield. I know it's real. Oh, the cryptozoologist says brusquely enough that even he seems taken aback by it. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid 
is more than mere superstition. Okay, Lena said there's been a sighting of it here in Martinez. Yes. The most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martinez specifically. Martinez. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species. But with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Okay, maybe the Insulindian Phasmid has died out? I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. Okay. Um... <laughs> Parthenosis! Encyclopedia fail! Uh, Parthenogenesis? Yes. The females don't need males to reproduce. Makes it easier for a species to survive in adverse conditions. God, how much better would humanity be if, he, if women didn't need men? Like, to reproduce or anything. Just a thought, you know? Um, females uh, reproducing without males are travesty, a crime against passion and common sense. Um, that's pretty clever. Yes. Yes. The Indian phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, scientist, it's best to remain dispassionate. I love him. Love him to bits. Um, tell me about these traps. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly. So I'm sure they'll do the trick. Quite cleverly. Um, Lena designed the traps? Yes. He says with some pride. More than some. He admires this about her. Oh, cool. How do the traps Simple. work? Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can get back out. Okay, that's cool. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution. But we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. And what are you using as bait? Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Okay. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. Well, what will you do if these traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. Some, but not much. Uh, let me ask you about something else. Yes. yes. What? Uh, Lena seems uh, pretty eager for you to return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My okay. wife understands that just as well as anyone. He looks south where Lena would Come be. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. He yells in response. Let Lena down. Come on. She wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't <laughs> I didn't know the phasmid was so important to Lena. Of Lina. course it's important to <clears throat> She's seen it. A verified sighting. On record. One of only four this century. And it's hers. Really? She sighted the phasmid? She didn't tell me that. Yes. yes. how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell. Not mine. <laughs> he coughs, then continues. Needless to say, you must ask her about the mysterious phasmid. Obviously. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. Another cough into his fist this time. Maybe you could go back to the whirling warm-up, uh, come back to check the traps later? No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the phasmid were to starve while we were sitting tea at the hostel? He's hmm. dead set on this. Yeah. What if we check the traps for you? I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. He looks at you with obvious surprise. Um, I am its scion. <laughs> K 
Chaos is my method. I am its scion. Um, I'm all in with this cryptid shit. I'm hooked. Uh, cryptozoology and detective work are very similar. Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and, above all, persistence. Where are these traps? They're a foring toggle. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouse is there. It's very near. Cool. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower. After the church. Good to know. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them... He gestures to the trap in front of him. You should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. That's seems cool. like a lot. Do we really have time for this? <laughs> Aren't you having fun? The pursuit of knowledge is its own justification. He doesn't look too convinced, but the small shrug indicates why not. If you think it's important, you have been right before. Uh, what do I do if there's a plasmid, a phasmid in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. What if I encounter the phasmid in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. And in the event you do. I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. Oh, please don't. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the side of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. Uh, lay it on me. Why not? Nice choice. Uh, he douses you with the old smelling spray and then gives you a satisfied nod. This is the smell of dying reeds, of longing crumbling into the water. Thank you, Shivers. I hope you're not paying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. Hmm. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. He looks at the lieutenant with disdain, then puts his spray back in his pocket. I'm ready, let's right. get to it. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted. And in need of assistance. Okay, cool. Finally, someone's talking sense. Yeah, it wouldn't be you, would it, Gary? Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down, Cam. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. I do want to talk if to it's Gary. Cryptid related business you want to discuss. You'll have time for that later too. Thank you, rhetoric. But what if the information is vital? On the hunt. How did you become a cryptozoologist? I liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. He seems reluctant to talk about himself, but he'll open up. <laughs> if you probably talk. Uh, so you're living your childhood dream out it's here? It's not Charles Blake. Just because I have to trade through the mud every so often. Um, have you ever discovered a cryptid? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered. And not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden. Is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. All right, yeah, cryptid. Uh, so, how many cryptids have been found? The list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Chemney, which is four thousand and eighty-two items long. About two thousand have been confirmed as hoaxes. Two are categorised as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation. And data collection. Only two have proven to be yes, real. The Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. <laughs> we cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. Hmm. Two out of four thousand is not even one percent. In fact, it is 0.05 percent. Ever more magnificent should our search contribute to making that number 0.075 percent. Okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. Why not just be a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling Real. too. I know you think one is a respectable profession. 
while the other is superstition. Everyone does. <laughs> Honestly, being a cryptozoologist trumps most of the garbage I've seen people do. Um, it's a profession just like any other. Indeed. My methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence. And I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. Your nerve endings tell you there is no such thing as a positive... <laughs> Thank you, pain threshold. Um, and has anything truly surprising ever happened to you? No. As I said, I have yet to catch a cryptid. Although I have come close. And what kind of evidence? To keep trying. Yeah. Uh, what kind of evidence do you Everything use? Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts. Like the one that brought us here. To look for the phasmid. I keep a very open mind. In all honesty, it does sound like a lot of fun. I mean, not that rewarding, I imagine, but a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for explaining that. Now about something yes. else. Yes. Um, let's talk about specific right. cryptids. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists, so I don't know what... We would have to discuss. What <laughs> to say, but decides against it. Since you've offered to help... Yeah, he doesn't want to talk to us that need much. need to ask him about specific cryptids. Cryptids you've heard about from Lena, or his friend Gary. He won't just mm. talk. Uh, just tell me about a cool cryptid. Um, okay, I know about the most dangerous cryptid, the Gnome of Jeroma. Formerly the most dangerous, yes. But do you know the most dangerous living cryptid? Living cryptid, I don't know. He doesn't want to make it feel like you knowing it is some big deal. <laughs> that must be the evil apes duking it out on the giant ball. Um, living? No. The most dangerous cryptid is a carnivorous ruminant, known colloquially as the Dread Moose. The Dread Moose. Yeah. Yes. The Dread Moose subsists entirely on flesh. It has even been known to dig up fresh graves in search of sustenance. Hold on, does it also attack people? Human remains have been found deep in the forest, torn apart, then trampled into the mulch by large hooves. Infer from that what you will. Alright, okay, what does the dread moose look like? Just like an ordinary ardent moose. Then how can you tell if it's the ordinary or the dread kind? You can't. That's what makes it so dreadful. And hard to identify. <laughs> I'm not completely sure about this dread moose. The bodies found in the forest. They're just one piece of physical evidence. There's more. What's the other the evidence? Recent surge in the moose population. As hidden carnivores, the dread moose are effectively removing competition for both themselves and their evolutionary cousins. <laughs> uh, but why would it need to hide its carnivorous moose nature? Moose already being hunted for sport. Can you imagine what would happen? If they came to get you as predators... <laughs> what exactly is the relationship between carnivorous moose and regular moose? carnivorous moose are a very young species. The result of a genetic mutation. That fared well in the process of natural selection. Alright, mate. Fine. It makes sense that such a majestic animal... Majestic. weapons, antlers, would come to rule the forest. The only strange thing... Is that it took so long. Uh -huh. He sees in the Dread Moose something perversely beautiful and just. Thank you, Inland Empire. Are there any reliable eyewitness accounts of a moose killing other animals for food? One slaughterhouse at the outskirts of the woods in Vasa reported that its staff kept seeing moose in the distance. The moose would just stare at the building as though they were waiting for something. Mm. Its eyes bloodshot and full of cruelty. That does sound suspicious. Suspicious moose. And that's not all. Some of the slaughterhouse apprentices went hiking by a nearby creek and saw a moose nibbling on an unidentified carcass. Anyway, there is more than enough evidence to justify a thorough search for the dread moose. Let's close the subject before it turns into an argument. I get the impression a lot of conversations with you turn into an argument. Here is a man. Who has had more than its fair share of I can imagine and would, surprising as it may seem, prefer not to have any more. Yeah, he's probably bored of it, isn't he? Um A yeah. willow person. <laughs> story. One non specialist would find rather dull. What a willow people. Not people, really. 
Some argue they aren't really animals. Oh, it's raining. They seem to have evolved directly from trees. So dryads, then. He says it in a self-explanatory everyday manner. They're very, very thin. Almost flat, in fact. And can camouflage themselves easily. Wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, they're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. <laughs> Wait, so I may have seen these willow people without knowing it. Probably have. How did you almost catch a willow Harry person? And I painted <clears throat> an entire groves worth of trees in slow drying paint. It was a bright lavender colour. I was hoping one of the willow people would get paint on it and not be able to camouflage itself. Oh. After waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow dashing through the grove. And then I chased it with a knit. Not very elegant. You can't be elegant in the field. And, well, it was faster than me. Ah, oh, what a shame. <laughs> Kim, stop it. I well, know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone than to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Furthermore, I'm not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I'm painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic. Okay, and Lena's sighting of the phasmid, is that? Confirmed. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptid sighting. Enough tales then, let's change the subject. By all means. Okay, I'll get going for now. Well, my loves, I think we will leave it there, especially since the game is auto-saving for some reason. Um, when we come back, we'll chat with uh, Gary the Crypto Fascist. That should be interesting, shouldn't it? Until then, bye-bye!